Happy Camper Radio, episode 19. Come on, let's go camping. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Happy Camper Radio Show, episode 19. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And as always, you, my friends, you can be one too. Daniel. Oh, you do I get just, an introduction? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here wondering what that dance was you're doing in that chair. That was my you, uh, you, train just, dance. Are you just so excited? Our music excited? sounds like train dance. Are you so excited or, to be back in town? Uh, you know, there's that's a, debatable. <laughs> with all this terrible weather that we've had here right. over the it past was good couple this weekend. months, all right, I can tell cabin fever has set in because you just had to get away again. Of course, it's yeah. the weekend. And That's you know what and I, I do? Hey, and I gotta congratulate you. You know, a few weeks ago, it was a three-story cabin with all the luxuries, including a hot a hot tub, uh-huh. and you've now moved up to a trailer. Uh, yeah. I, I like it. Only 36 you're, feet. You, you, hey, that's... You're, One you're, bathroom you're on, for Daniel, six people. Daniel, it was rough. You're on the right path. You're on the right path. Keep doing what go. you're doing, and you'll be oh. in a tent. You'll be in a tent before long. <laughs> can, I, can I give you an update? <laughs> no, you can go ahead and light the fire. I'm going to go ahead oh, and give, okay. you, give you the ceremonial campfire lighter. Oh, I got something to say about that, too. And, and, well, let's go ahead and get the fire lit okay. first, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Daniel, okay. hey, good, good job. Okay, but anyway, here's the theory. Okay. So we checked on our pop-up today, and um, we when we went in the store and we saw these big old, uh, we, these big old flame, what, huh, what was it? The big old lighters. And I was thinking, what if this was the ceremonial lighter? It was like a big old, like those pocket lighter, lighters, not a Zippo, but the little cheap ones, but they were big versions of them, and I thought that'd be pretty cool to have. But um, no, our pop up. Uh, I checked by the, uh, I checked at the, you know, place where we're getting it fixed, and um, yeah, it's coming along. I mean, they've replaced some of the stuff, some of the crack stuff, but uh, you know, it's working well. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad. Um, you know, when, when are we going to see it back in your driveway again? Uh, later this week, hopefully. Later this week, okay. That just takes up more parking spot for my wild and crazy parties I have. All right, now now, what have you had done to it? I mean, it's been gone for so long. I'm, I'm sure, you, is this going to be like uh, the uh, the Brett Michaels RV remodel? I mean, is it, is it going to have all kind of the... We're going to have the flames shooting up in the air whenever it comes back in the driveway? Maybe. Speaking of flames, you know what I saw when we checked out? Oh, I'm getting way over my head. We bought a water regulator. I don't know. We haven't talked about this on the show, but evidently our uh, trailer had a leak in it because our water wasn't regulated. So we had to get a water regulator because, you know, the PSI for some of those spigots is way too heavy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we had to get a regulator for that because I think we had a leak in ours. But basically, we're... uh, So we got that. We're getting... uh, we're getting a uh, our uh, sink put back to where it was because it fell off. Because I don't know the board it, the boards in this uh, trailer aren't very good and they they kind of ripped off over the years. But we're getting that. We're getting our front fixed and uh, I can't wait. Disney is. I was closer. I was about to say by the time it gets back here you're going to be on the road again. We probably are. We yeah. were, we were we almost got kicked out of the place because we wanted to uh, we wanted to go back there and look at it and it was back in like the uh, the bay the the shop as it were. Well, <laughs> I I am so looking forward to seeing it when it comes in and oh, yeah, uh, you we'll know I'm going to have to come on over there with the digital camera. We're going to have to snap a bunch yeah, of pictures. You know, we can put it on and the website. Get you and your wife Deidre standing right next to it. Yes, I mean this, it's it's got to be it's it's got to be a winner mm-hmm. when it whenever it gets back here. Wow, four zero four five three seven two two six seven is the phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show, and you can tell Daniel's all on fire today, and he's all Ooh. excited and pumped up. Uh, you turn the air you conditioner know? off, Skip. I mean, that, I mean, what are you trying to do? Sweat me out? Well, we're by the fire. What do you What do you expect? Oh, you know, fire. Shoot, mm-hmm. this thing ain't putting off no kind of heat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can give Daniel and I a call anytime, day or night, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. The phone always answers. Leave us your name, where you're calling from, what part of the world you live in. That is, and leave us your camping question in your voicemail. And we'll do the magic on this end of the operation and get you on an upcoming episode and answer 
your camping question for you. Of course, you can always email us by going to our website at www.happycamperradio.com. Just click on the Contact Us button at the top of the page, and we'll go ahead and respond to your questions or your comments that way as well. Okay, Skip, yeah. speaking of fires, I, I forgot this. When we were checking out to get that water regulator at our camping store, uh-huh. they have little things where you can change the color of your fires. I guess they're like little dye packets or something that you can put in your fires to make the fire green or red or blue. We should totally do that next time there isn't a burn ban. And then we could uh, record it and show it to all our folks out in radio land or podcast hey, you know, land. You just, you just show them one of those uh, Daniel psychedelic evenings uh, right, right there. You Ooh, go. It'd be kinda, psychedelic, baby. Yeah, kind of like that, uh, that uh, tie-dye clothing that you wear exactly. around here. No, <laughs> hey, come on now. I gave that to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Camp. Talker. Well, Daniel, we've got an interesting conversation, an in- interesting topic, should I say, that we're going to be discussing on today's show, and I think it's an important one. It's one that I think a lot of people really need to pay attention to, because while all good intentions are there, sometimes we tend to do things that can be harmful to wildlife. Mm-hmm. All right, and that's something that we do not want to do. And basically, what we're going to talk about today is don't feed the wildlife while you're out there camping, whether you're in your backyard, whether you're in the city park, wherever it may be. And uh, there's there's reason for this, Daniel. Um, now you know you got to keep in mind, and I got I'm going to share a couple of things with our listeners too because I've had some personal experiences along these lines as well. Now, I can recall several incidents over the years where I have gone to city parks. I have been wandering in areas, public areas, and I have actually had squirrels come up to me looking for food. And I mean, they come right up to you. That's how they are at Disney, Skip. I believe (laughs) it. I believe it. And you know, and the sad part about it is people are feeding these animals and they are becoming so reliant on humans for their food consumption that they have lost all interest and all instinct to actually go out there and hunt for their food well in all fairness skip Mm -hmm. when they feed uh when they feed animals at disney maybe they think they're chippendale Maybe they get confused because Chippendale are chipmunks. Well, Daniel, you know, so maybe they're they're getting confused. Like, oh look, it's the real thing. Hey, all joking aside, you know, <laughs> Chippendales is the cartoons, all right. But we're talking about real life wildlife out okay. there well, in, in in nature, you know. And that's 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 very important, you know. And like it says, for me, over the years, I have experienced this. Now, hey, am I going to be one of the guilty parties to stand up and admit? Yes, there have been times I have actually fed these animals. I mean, and they take food right out of your hand (laughs) okay but is it a good thing is it a healthy thing and that's the question and that's something you know you and i are going to be talking about here today one of the experiences that i recall that's always going to stick in my mind when my kids were very young i'm going to go back maybe 16 or 17 years now i took my children camping at a very young age in life they've loved it since day one mom on the other hand was never a camper she never wanted to go out and she was the type of a person that if you pushed her too far you can forget about ever trying to get her to go out again but there was this one time i had a weekend off in fact i think i had one of those extended weekends you know where you you got sunday night off you got monday night off Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going away for three days, and that's all I need to actually throw the gear in the vehicle, head on out to the mountains, and go camping. Well, anyway, we went to this uh, this one camping place, and it's a beautiful place, Daniel. It's in uh, the northern part of Georgia. It's Red Top Mountain. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about a wildlife paradise. There is wildlife up there. There is, I'm telling you, it's Lake Alatoona. There's a lot of great camping it's been oh, yeah. a while since I've been up there. Well, we it's... passed it on our way up to my uh, parents' trailer this weekend, and uh, it is full. I don't know if people in Radio Land know this, but um, for a while we were in a drought, and Alatuna always looked low, but Alatuna was full, and people were everywhere. Is right, it, isn't it any wonder with all this rain we've been having? Right? Yes, I, I, know. I know the lake is at full pull. It was beautiful. But in, anyway, you know, it's, it's one of the things that stuck in my mind 
is we did get mom to go along on this particular weekend. And it was with the understanding that, look, if you just come along, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to set up camp. I'm going to buy the food. I'm going to prepare the food. I'm going to cook. I'm going to clean. I'm going to do it all. You just sit back and relax. You cooked, Skip? What'd you of cook? Of course, Daniel. <laughs> my son, my, me in the camp kitchen. Come on, buddy. Did you bring your microwave? Or Hello? You know better than oh, that. Oh, whoa. Hey. Don't raise your hand at me. Come no. on, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but in any, any event, you know, we did go there and we had a great time. And this one morning we woke up, I decided I was going to go ahead and get up and cook breakfast. And here come this beautiful herd of deer oh. right through the campground. And they were in very close proximity to us and very close to some of the other campers, a lot more closer to them than they were me. But they were just taking their good old time. Nobody was scaring them. They saw humans. They've been around humans. And they were just going on about their own business. There was maybe three or four of them. Well, anyway, I just went into the tent real quick and said, hey, come on, you all got to come out here and take a look at this. And everybody jumped up. I mean, they just come out and it was one of the most beautiful things in the world they've ever seen. So here later on, this is our final night that we're there. We get together and I cook dinner and we had a great dinner. And afterwards, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I was going to go ahead and start cleaning up. And I was really surprised and pumped up that mom actually got in there and started helping out with the dishes. She says, here, I'll tell you what, you go ahead, wash, I'll dry. So she went ahead and took the dishes that I gave her, and as she was drying them, she put it on the picnic table, which is, you know, right there at the park. And about the third or fourth dish that I handed her, she turned around to put that dish on the picnic table, and there's this big old raccoon sitting right there. <laughs> And he is sitting up on his hind legs. He is begging for food. That was the end of it right there. Time to go home. What? That was it. She was never going to go camping again. Get that raccoon out of here. No, no, no. You know. And well, Skip, you know, that what? was Miko. You you remember Daniel. Pocahontas? That uh, was Miko. You know, I'm, I'm sure it was. But <laughs> anyway, you know, I, it's it's just, and I I point that out. It was it's a memorable experience for us. It's a memorable experience for the kids. Not so much for mom, but anyway, you know, it was one of these situations. Whereas this raccoon would not have been there if people had not been feeding that raccoon, mm -hmm. and that raccoon had not been accustomed to humans being around. Okay. Now, is it a healthy thing to feed the animals? No. And I'll tell you what, if you go to our website right now, which is www.happycamperradio.com, go under Skip's Corner under the links page. I've got some information right there from uh, the wildlife, uh, the USDA, and they, it tells you some information there about feeding animals and what the detrimental effects can be. Now, one of the things, you know, we've got to keep in mind, human food is not healthy for wild animals. Animals, they have a specialized diet, and it does not include human food. Now, feeding these animals the wrong food can be unhealthy for the animals. And what's even worse, animals cannot distinguish food from wrappers and foil, and they can get sick from eating these items. And you know, Daniel, I get on you about picking up your candy wrappers all the time before you leave camp here every week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's, it's not a healthy thing. Another thing you also got to keep in mind, too, that too many animals in one place can increase the chance of disease transmission from people among humans and other wildlife. It's not a healthy thing. And if you get too many animals there dependent upon human food, it can, it can lead to some problems. And it could lead to the authorities coming in there and in some cases having to trap these animals and in worst case scenarios, some of these animals may have to be destroyed. And that's a, the, the sad part about it all, all the way around, because it should never have to be that way. They cannot really locate these animals, or should I say relocate the animals, because if they have already been dependent upon humans to feed them, locating them back into the wild away from the human population is never going to be a good thing because now they have to learn how to hunt and survive by themselves all over again. And in some cases, they may have lost that instinct. So again, you know, it's, it's never good to go ahead and feed the wildlife. And also, you know, feeding wildlife along the road is dangerous too. 
And I have seen so many videos. I have seen so many pictures out there. I have seen so many instances where in a camping environment where people are there all the time, and I want to take maybe out west, you know, out, out in Wyoming maybe, you know, and I've seen a lot. And I'm, I'm not just picking on that particular state because there's other states where, you know, you know where, where animals will come right up to the edge of the road. They'll come up right to the cars and, you know, expect to be fed. And people, you know, not knowing any better, will just go ahead and feed these animals. If too many animals get fed by the road, then next thing you know, when the people aren't there, the folks are out looking for food, or the animals are out there looking for food, and next thing you know, they're getting hit by a car or a truck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's there's some, uh, you know, it's it's just not a good thing. And that's, that's, you know, one of the things I think it is so important that, you know, we discuss on this program today, that if you're out there camping, whether you're, you know, out there in a public campground, whether you're out there in a private campground, or if you are even in your own backyard, if you have wildlife that come up and frequent your property, it is not good to feed wildlife. Um, Skip, I'm going to throw you a curveball real quick. You you ready for this one? I'm, I'm ready to catch it. <laughs> All right. Now, sometimes uh, we go to uh, campgrounds, and there might be stray cats, stray dogs. You know, cats and dogs, they're a part of our life. Would you feed a cat or a dog? To, you know how they have those, um, you know, uh, stray cats and stray dogs? They're just like the, they belong to the campground almost. I don't know if you've ever experienced this before. But I have. Yeah, but I mean, what would you do in that instance? Well, would you... let's keep in mind, Daniel, we're not talking about dogs and cats. We're talking about wildlife, feeding wildlife. Now, if I did see a stray dog or a stray cat and I saw that that animal was hungry, by all means, you know, I'm going to do what I can to, you know, to help, help feed that animal. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to be mindful of the fact that that particular animal I do not know may carry disease. So, you know, I'm going to keep that in mind also. Mm -hmm. And people who do uh, put food out for their pets at night, Daniel, I have, I can tell you this for a fact. I have seen uh, cat food in the back patio before. Mm hmm and you know the cats fill up on it next thing you know here comes a possum oh yeah and he's we eating that yeah too. and you know and they're all over the place too uh-huh now you know a, a possum knows where good food is as well as the cats do your house right don't don't get me started <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's you know it, it's it's a good thing you know and and daniel you know we all got big hearts you know we know like in our neighborhood there there are a right. lot of stray cats and they do come around and you know, and if they're they want to be fed, everybody puts food out for the cats. Mm -hmm. But you know, is is it a really good thing to do? I would say, you know, if you're going to go ahead and feed your stray pets in your area, go ahead and do that. But by all means, bring the food in mm -hmm. after they're done eating and they've decided to go ahead and wander off. Well, if you leave the food out there, Daniel, you're going to you're going to encourage other animals to come by and start feeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, we, I have to say, we are kind of blessed being where we are because we have uh, something called a game ranch nearby our house. Oh, yes. And Let's give those folks a shout out, Daniel. The Yellow River Game Ranch. Yeah. I don't uh -huh. know if you wanted to get into this or not, but these are uh, injured wildlife from around the area. They got deer. They got squirrel. Well, I don't. Well, they, they do. The, squ the yeah. squirrels are just there uh -huh. and they just take advantage of where they are. But they've got deer, and they've got buffalo, and they've got rabbits, and they've got raccoons. Which, by the way, raccoons are very mean. They're crazy. But, yeah, you go in there, and um, actually this place is home to generally the official uh, prognosticator <laughs> uh, of if we're going to get, uh, you know, of, uh, uh, what's it called, Groundhog's Day. It's our official prognosticator. They have Poxitani Phil up north. We have General Lee, and he has his big old plantation. And actually, uh, this year, me and my wife went out there, and we saw him. But anyway, you can go out there, and you can feed the wildlife there if you uh, if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, so to get it out of your system, I guess. But anyway, back to what you were saying. Well, you know, Daniel, that's a, that's a good point, and I, and I was going to go ahead and bring that up, too. You know, if you do enjoy feeding wildlife... There are places just like that that are probably not very far from home. I know there are there are a few places here uh, in the state that we live in where there you know you can actually go to the game ranch, 
pay a small admission fee and spend the entire day with the animals. And you can purchase the food right there. If you want to uh, purchase like maybe a bag of carrots or a bag of celery or maybe a loaf of bread or, or a package of crackers or something, you know, which is the, the food that these animals are accustomed to eating, you know, you can go ahead and do that and talk about deer. Deer will come right up to you, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, and you can pet them, and I mean, it's it take pictures with them. It's just it's it's just a very very memorable place to be, they and that is the too. place. Yeah, that is the that is the place. You know, but you know, some of the animals that you know that you did mention here, like the raccoons and the bear and what have you, those those animals are contained. Yeah, you know, in in a pen or a big pit or you know or someplace you know where they do not have human contact. <laughs> but you know, it's if you love wildlife, go to places like that if you want to go ahead and feed the animals. I know it can be encouraging. I know it can be tempting. But if you're out there in the wilderness, you know this is not the place to be to be feeding animals. You know, even if they do come up, if you want to want to go ahead and take some pictures, that's fine. But the more you feed the animals that are out there when you are camping the more you're going to have those animals come around to other human beings. And again, you know, some of these animals, you, you don't know their background. You don't know if they have any type of disease. Yeah, you don't and want... It's, you, know, I mean, you don't, you don't need, need to have that you know exposure to you or your family. I mean, they could be friendly and everything, mm-hmm. but you don't know if maybe they have rabies or something, and maybe they scratch you accidentally, and then, you know something might happen to you so you know you you just never know i mean i i totally agree that you shouldn't feed the wildlife when you're camping because you just don't know what kind of things they got going on with them they might look healthy and everything but deep down inside they might have some kind of uh, a disease or something that maybe they can deal with but maybe you can't i don't know i'm not and i'll tell you something (laughs) else too daniel you know and we'll probably have to do a separate episode just on this subject matter alone it's camping in bear country because there are some additional definitely that is no joke i mean there is some additional precautions that you're going to have raccoons they won't kill you bears will kill you we're uh me and my wife the other day were watching um we were watching a uh, a little video on bears and how they can get into all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you know, bears are no joke. You do not feed bears. I, I mean, other things that they won't kill you. A bear will kill you. So you got to be really careful. Well, you know, you don't. You can't underestimate a bear. I don't want to say a bear would kill you in every single instance, but you no. know, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. You know, use some common sense while you're out there camping. Uh, one of the things with bears we've got to keep in mind, too, is even if bears come into your campsite and you are not there, just because you may have your food put away doesn't mean they're going to totally not going to totally destroy your camp. Mm-hmm. If a bear sees something that is unfamiliar to their territory, some foreign objects that are in their environment they're definitely going to come up to investigate yeah you know and they may not intentionally mean to tear your camp up (laughs) they may intentionally tear it up to look for food who knows but you know i definitely wouldn't want to be around there and i definitely wouldn't want to be inside the tent all right so you know yeah we're probably going to end up talking about that here in a separate episode because there are again there are some additional precautions you're going to want to take if you are camping in bear country Our phone number here again is 404-537-2267. That's the phone number to the Happy Camper Radio Studio. And if you want to give Daniel and I a call, please do so. Pick up the phone anytime with your camping question. And again, if you want to email us, our website is www.happycamperradio.com. Click on the Contact Us button, and you can send Daniel and I an email. Now, how can you help when you're out here camping First of all, keep your campsite clean. This is very, very important. Keep it clean, keep it neat, keep it orderly, and make sure that you put your food away. Even food scraps need to be put in their proper place. A lot of your campgrounds have dumpsters. Tie your food up in plastic bags, the food that you're going to be disposing of, and put them in the appropriate uh, dumpster when you're out there camping in a public or a private campground. If you are going to store food, you're gonna to wanna to use plastic uh, storage containers for your food. And this way that takes a lot of the aroma out of the air 
and you go ahead and put them inside your cooler or or you know some of the necessary places uh that where you can store food where it's not going to be easily available to the animals and again you know, like i said we want to dispose of our trash appropriately Daniel, it is time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show, and we have got a great camping destination for our listeners. Now, if you're going to go camping out here, Daniel, you're going to have to get in your camper, you're going to have to get in your car, and you're going to have to make it quick because we're going clear on the other side of the country. We are going to the state of Alaska. Mm. It is the Mendenhall Campground, and their season runs all the way through September 14th, uh, not very far away, you know, if you don't have an opportunity to visit this particular campground this year. You might want to keep it in mind for additional years down the road. But if you go to our website and click on the Featured Campground tab, we'll have it there all week long just to do that and look at some of the beautiful photographs. And I'll tell you, I I am really surprised at some of the pictures that are out there. They're just absolutely gorgeous. This is a great campground. They have 68 sites available. There are still some available this year, and you can find them by going to their date range availability. Just click on that and see what sites they do have available. The campground is situated on the shoreline of Mendenhall Lake, which is a pretty nice sized lake. The Mendenhall Glacier lies in the north and the Mendenhall River flows to the east. On either side of the campground, the mountains rise 4,000 to 7,000 feet above the Mendenhall Glacier. And just look at some of the pictures, Daniel, at that site. You just love it. You really want to. Now, they've got some great hiking trails out there, too. You might want to go ahead and and study up a little bit, make yourself familiar, and probably get some advice before you want to go ahead out here and camp in this particular area. Because, you know, they do have a lot of wildlife. What we're talking about today, this is bear country. And if you've never hiked in bear country before, you may want to talk to some people who have some experience in doing that before you go on uh, on and about a uh, camping trip and a hiking trip. And they've got some great trails out there. You can find some of it right under the recreation uh, title of, on the, uh, the website here. It is the Mendenhall Campground. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. It is one that I definitely want to visit somewhere down the road. Believe me, it looks like a beauty. And as always, if you have a campground that you would like Daniel and I to feature later on down the road, all you've got to do is drop me an email, skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Make sure you include a link to the campground's website so we can go ahead and feature it under the Featured Campground tab right there on our homepage. Daniel, it has been a great show. It is great to have you back. Do you think mm-hmm. you're going to sit tight here for a moment? Uh, that's debatable. That's deb- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was talking about uh, going camping this week, but, you know, I started a project around the house, uh, and I think I bit off a little bit more than I can chew. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, the to get out there this week. Right, no, I don't want to call it the honey-do list because <laughs> this is one I decided I was going to go ahead and do. I took on the project by myself. But, you know, if later on down the week, uh, as you know, we get a little bit closer toward the weekend. If I can squeeze a few days away, hey, I'm going to head right on over to our local campground here. I've got my stuff sitting right by the door. It's not going to take me long to actually get the stuff together and head on out the door. And I'm going to go ahead and plan on doing that if all goes well. But you know, Daniel, as a pl- as it's always a pleasure to have you here in the studio. Yeah. You know, Good and time. we're going to keep we're going to keep a log on the fire just in the event. You happen to squeeze away again. <laughs> there's always but, Skype. <laughs> yeah, there's always Skype, and we can we can always do that. Hey, anyway, the Happy Camper Radio Show is always available to you on our website at happycamperradio.com. Just click on the podcast episodes. It is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper, and you, my friends, can be one too. We'll catch you next week. Have a great one, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>